just a pretty basic question. What was your reaction when you heard that Steve was a test positive and that Mike was going to be uh, coaching this game? Uh, it's been a wild, wild day all the way around. Um, you know, we had some. You just had to kind of figure it out on the fly and understand uh, <clears throat> we've been through this before. The guys that were here in 16, 17, um, you know, with coaching his, his back problems back in the day where he, you know, he was he was he was out of lineup but still had an influence and might be stepped up. So <clears throat> we didn't really have a lot of time to react. So just uh, going with the same approach. I understand we 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 know what the game plan is. And then, uh, you know, go out and try to execute. We obviously didn't for three quarters. Defensively, we were solid. Just offensively, we just couldn't get anything going. And then uh, gutted it out. Steph, two questions for you. Uh, is there anything unique about the purple shoes? And is there something you figured out in the fourth quarter? Nothing figured out. It's just don't let in the first three quarters influenced the fact that we still had a chance to win the game. Shoot the shots you think you can make, play aggressive, take care of the ball. We did all of those things. <clears throat> we were able to get enough stops. That guy in the corner was unbelievable down the stretch, um, taking on that challenge. So just understand we've been here before. You know, whether we won or lost, the intentions of how we could give ourselves a chance in the fourth quarter was all, you know, all we focused on, and then we got it done. You, you shocked the system a little bit. You were yelling something at Draymond when he got that tip block on, on Jaron to close it. What were you saying to him? I, have, I don't know what the transcript was. It's something to the effect of that's what you do. And every opportunity we have to appreciate his greatness on that end of the floor, especially at this stage, that's what it's all about. Um, you know, offensive avalanches are loud and then the crowd gets into it. But when the defensive stop seals games and you get to enjoy those moments. Hits, hits a little different, especially when you see that fire come out of him. Um, so I don't know what I actually said verbatim, but it was something to that effect. Oh. There's a lot of emotions going on before the game. Uh, you know, then you get the, the coaching change. Um, but yet you guys, even though the offense wasn't where you wanted to be, you, you did enough to stay in the game. Was there a sense that your experience and that you guys would find a way to figure out a way to, to pull this thing out all along? Yeah, just staying with it. Like I said, defensively, we kept them at bay for the most part throughout the game. And we still were our worst enemy a little bit with rushing in the first six minutes on offense. Um, there are times our shot selection and missing shots affected our transition defense. But <clears throat> for the most part, like, you know, when you come into a fourth quarter with no flow offensively and you're still within, you know, three or four possessions of coming back, like that feels, feels, uh, uh, there's some motivation behind that. And then, like you said, we've been here before. We know how to pull off games like this, whether it happened or not. It's, it's about just how you approach it, and we, we made that happen. Steph, how, how much do you appreciate what Mike Brown has? Brought you know during these these times to to step in and and do this on the on the postseason stage and, and also he said there's been some good natured razzing of him the last well since yesterday uh, some good jokes going down on him taking over the Kings. <clears throat> I mean his track record obviously as a head coach he's coached in finals before coached some high powered teams some big market teams like he's been through it all been with us for these last six years and. He's been interim coach for a little bit and made his presence felt, especially defensively, you know, leading us this year. So he has a good presence about him, a great way about him. I know coach talked about it, uh, I think, this morning about what he's meant to our team and to that coaching staff and just maybe the way that they approach it all year in terms of everybody having a voice and us being able to hear that throughout the year. It makes situations like tonight a little bit easier of a transition. Um, he had a lot of good words tonight. 
I don't know it's in the history if you've been named the head coach of two teams in 24 hours. So he's uh, he's continuing to uh, set set some trends. Steph, last one, last one for Tim. Steph, that one liner you said on TNT after the game, uh, you guys uh, some something to the fact that you guys felt like you were maybe all turned into the Sacramento Kings or some. Uh, some yeah, I misheard that. I was saying because Mike was the coach, I felt like we all got traded because there was a lot of talk about him being the head coach and obviously all of a sudden now he is the head coach of our team tonight so it wasn't about how we were playing it was about just the vibe of Mike Brown as the head coach of the Kings and and now all of a sudden now he's the head coach of two teams so gotta get that straight yeah it's good safe thank you great thank you appreciate that <clears throat>